So Cursor is on a serious roll. Last week they dropped Plan Mode, which developers are absolutely raving about, and I've been using it on every single project since. And this week they've just released Cursor 2.0. It's an update that puts them way up there in my top tier list for AI agents when it comes to building out apps with AI. I think this release is going to leave other tools like Codex and Claude Code really scrambling to catch up. So let's see how you would practically apply all these new cursor features to a build. So our first drop is a blazingly fast coding model, four times faster than similarly intelligent models. And I really can feel that in terms of speed, it is blazingly fast. And if you look at this comparison on TPS or tokens per seconds against other models, it really ranks way up there. It changes how I'm developing. I can iterate a lot faster, I'm not going off to do other tasks. I'm staying in flow and that's pretty huge. In terms of intelligence, they say it's not matching the strongest frontier models, but it's pretty close up there. Something to keep in mind here, these are cursor bench scores. They're not the usual SWE bench or any of the existing benches that we're aware of. And I can't comment fully on its quality compared to the competition, but having built some small apps, it feels like a really solid model. Faster models keep you engaged and they keep you in development flow. So this is one I've been waiting for for months and it's something Claude and Codex won't be replacing anytime soon. So our second drop from Cursor is what I call AI deathmatch or what the Cursor team are calling best of N. Basically it's where two models can fight each other out, even up to seven models or eight models can fight each other out to see who develops the best feature. So in the agent window here, when I put in my prompt, I have the ability now to select this option of use multiple models. So I can decide to use Composer, I could use Sonnet, I could use GPT-5 Codex to work on any particular issue that I want. So let's say I want to write a new feature for detecting outliers. I can just write that in here and run this. And what this does is open up a new option here. You can run this locally on your machine or a work tree. Essentially a step up from branching, you can run multiple versions of your code base to test out different ideas at the same time. And we have a new worktrees.json option in the cursor folder here, which allows us to set up those work trees. I'm gonna do a deeper dive on work trees and how I use them in another video. So make sure to subscribe. So here you can see with one prompt, it spins up three different agents and it creates its own work trees. If I click between each one, you can see it'll actually switch between the work trees and all the different files that were created. In worktrees.json, you can actually set that it installs your project and actually runs the server for you. And if I go to terminal here, click new terminal, you'll see this little this little option down at the very bottom here that says open work tree. Well, you can actually see that it opens this work tree here, DQ. C2E and it opens the same one down here down in the cursor and I can just hit npm run dev and run that and test it out. Of course there are costs that are involved for generation but in some high stakes cases it's worth running an AI debt match to get the best of N. Okay, drop number two is coming up after a few quick words from our sponsor. If you are a product manager or designer it's really worth paying attention. So the company behind all those amazing IDEs like PyCharm and IntelliJ, they just launched something called Matter. And honestly, it solves a real strong pain point. Here is the beauty of Matter. This is the Switch Dimension website and it's an XJS site. So I can use Matter to create a mirrored version of this site. I just copy the address to the GitHub repo, paste it into Matter, and literally within a few moments, it had created a preview environment and a running server. Now, as a designer or product manager or marketer, I can do really cool things like just make natural language suggestions to change things. I can use this little element selector here to say I want to focus on this and change the content or in my case what I did was I got it to add in a brand new call to action just with a very simple prompt. I can use GPT or Claude 5. So when you finish making your changes just connect to GitHub and it will be submitted as a pull request. Before you had three different stages to making any changes, a lot of conversation over and back. Now you can have a product manager, designer, marketeer jump in, use natural language to make any kind of changes they want. They can send that to the developer as a pull request and then it just gets merged into the project if they're happy. It empowers the product manager, the designer, the marketeer and saves the developer a whole ton of time in shipping products. Thanks to JetBrains for sponsoring this video. I highly recommend you check out Matter. 
via the link in the description down below. So drop number three is browser use. Now this is something that's been out in beta for a while, but it's officially in general usage now. So you can see here, once I've selected browser, it opens the internal browser. You can also decide to use the Google Chrome browser so I can do the same thing, popping open a browser there, entered in MKHB, tested it out, taking some screenshots, checking through all the content, and it gives us the browser test results. What's cool here, it can test the interface, it can test the console logs. Now I know we've had browser MCP and Chrome tools for quite some time, but how fast this moves now with Composer is the real game changer. It allows our agents to be a lot more autonomous. They build something, they check it in the browser to see if it works, they correct any errors, and then they present the final output to us without us having to get manually involved. The next drop is code review. You can set up code review to actually go and review the commit or the changes to see if there's any errors or anything that needs to be fixed. So now once a round of changes are made, I can now use this find issues button or agent review to actually find any issues. And you can also access this here in the right sidebar where I can click find issues. So that's going to review our code base in the background. You can see here, it calls out one potential issue and I can go ahead and then fix that issue either here or here. You can decide to run this automatically on every agent change or commit, and it will give you a list of all the issues and solutions. It's not gonna be foolproof, but it is gonna help you catch out some issue cases and code smells. For the rest, you're just going to have to rely on good old fashioned experience for now. So this release includes many other new features that are seriously worth checking out. You can actually go and visit the change log here. And we've got some other great things like improve code review. We now have sandbox terminals for a little bit more safety when we're running our commands. We have team commands and rules that can be shared amongst teams, which is really a welcome feature. And voice mode, of course, so you can actually prompt the model with your voice. I'm really excited about this release. Uh, if you can't tell, it's already helping me build at a faster pace. If you want to learn how to use Cursor to build a killer landing page for your startup idea without writing any code, check out this video next. See you in the next one.